Hello, this is Scott from Optics Realm. It's May 2012. This is Optics Tutorial 6, Chief and Marginal Rays and Ray Tracing. I've taken, uh, I've been gone after a long hiatus after a crazy winter. Goal of this class is to provide an understanding of paraxial rays. And uh, I want to begin understanding ray tracing and gaining an appreciation for what goes into doing ray tracing. There's two family of rays, paraxial. This is where sine theta equals theta. This is a small angle approximation, or tangent theta equals theta. These are the fundamental basis for all optical, basic optical parameters in an optical system, and they help us compute things like focal length and aberrations. There's also trigonometric rays where you don't make any small angle approximations, and that's why we have Zmax, and we use those for optical analyses and detailed optimizations. For paraxial rays, there's two unique rays, the marginal ray and the chief ray. All other paraxial rays are linear combinations of these two rays. These rays generate a lot of information about the optical system, first order like focal length and field of view, as well as third order like spherical aberration, coma, and astigmatism. Let's talk about the marginal ray. Rick Jurgens uh, astutely put a, he's one of my mentors and a former boss, he astutely put this clip art of a dejected person who has the self-image of himself that he's marginal and his head's hung low and he's kind of staring at his feet. And I like this analogy because I, whenever I think marginal ray, the way I remember it is this guy standing as your object and the marginal ray begins at his feet. He's staring at his feet. It goes to the edge of the aperture stop and gets focused down and where it crosses the axis again is the image. And there's two quantities that describe this. This is the, the ray height and the marginal ray angle, the height being in lens units, the ray angle being in radians. Since this is a small angle approximation, you like to do things in radians. The marginal ray in image space is the working F number, working F number in this case because it's a finite conjugate. It's one over two times that uh, marginal ray angle. And the other ray is the paraxial chief ray. And I don't want to be um, politically incorrect, but the analogy we, we like to use is a Native American chief, and they have this headdress, and it's fitting because I picture him at the object, and the chief ray begins at his headdress, goes through the aperture stop, and then where the image is, and again, that's located by the marginal ray. The height of the chief ray at the image is uh, it's the height of of your object or your of your image. There's two quantities that also describe it. That's the ray height, and we use bars on top to denote the chief ray, so Y bar. And again, the ray angle, the chief ray angle is U bar. Anywhere this crosses the axes is a pupil. And that's kind of an advanced topic. We'll be talking about stops and pupils, entrance pupils, exit pupils in a later podcast. Putting it all together, we've got our uh, marginal ray here in orange, starting at the feet of the object, going through the edge of the stop, coming back to the feet at the image. The chief ray starting at the head, the headdress through the aperture stop, and then the height of the image. There's also matrix methods that you can use to characterize a full optical system. We're not going to cover that. Instead, we're going to cover YNU ray trace. This method is used to bookkeep, essentially bookkeep your chief and marginal ray through an optical system. Uh, I will provide spreadsheets on my, pod, uh, on my uh, website and I'll put those underneath this uh, video podcast. I recommend that you do some by hand first. No computer, no spreadsheet, just paper, pencil, and go through it a few times, if just a few simple surfaces to get a feel for how these work. It's going to give you awesome insight into an optical system, and it's going to give you wisdom that just driving ray trace code isn't going to give you, isn't going to impart on you. And again, this YNU ray trace, it's the basis for first, not only first order aberrations, but sorry, first order properties, but color aberrations, third order and higher aberrations, and you can also use it to include tilts and decenters. I'll be providing a spreadsheet and going over it here, but there's other YNU ray trace resources. John Grievenkamp's Field Guide to Geometrical Optics is a great resource. It's 30, 40 bucks. Can't recommend this book enough. And Edmund Optics has a tutorial website. Here's the URL. It's long. It's probably easier just to do a Google Edmund Optics Ray Trace. 
Both of these put the parameters in each row and the surfaces in columns. I will be doing the opposite. I am actually transposing the spreadsheet. So in this case, we got surfaces in different rows and parameters in different columns here. Why are we doing that? It's more akin to what the ray trace codes. Here's a snapshot of Zmax's Cook triplet. So each row is a different surface and the parameters radius thickness glass are in the columns and we're following that here so radius of curvature inverse of that uh, curvature your thickness your index your optical power and we're actually doing the negative of optical power your reduced thickness and your chief and marginal ray parameters this will be on optics row and we'll provide the link and thanks to nick shishka for putting this together there's three algebraic equations that allow you to move through this spreadsheet, this uh, ray trace method. The first one is optical power, and that's essentially the difference in index times the curvature. So the optical power is n prime, which is the index on your current line in your spreadsheet minus the previous one times the curvature from the previous one. Once you get your power, and actually the spreadsheet calculates the negative of power, then you can transfer from one surface to another. This, is, this allows you to characterize ray heights as you progress through the optical system. Now, just because I have y prime and y, it, it's not saying marginal ray. You could put a bar here. This is any paraxial ray. It could be chief or marginal. They're chief and marginal if they hit the requirements previously stated. So your, your, your new y height prime that's on your next surface or on your current line is your prior height times the reduced distance, so it's thickness divided by index, times your optical angle. Now these indices really cancel out, but we need to calculate these parameters in case you're doing a lot of tracing through glass. Once you get this transfer, you can then do refraction. We say refraction, but this works for reflection as well, because uh, you just put an index of minus one to get a mirror. Optical angle, the new optical angle is the old optical angle, minus the power, this negative power, times the prior uh, ray height. These are snapshots from the spreadsheet that you can download from my website. This first one is just intended to show you we're calculating power, really it's negative power, it should be a negative sign here, on surface 1. And the way you do that is you take your current index, which is covered by this, 1.62, minus one times the curvature. Now the curvature, most people are calibrated to a radius. The curvature is just one over. Um, the spreadsheet's just taking care of all that. So power, delta index, times curvature. Next is the transfer calculation. So this box right here, your marginal ray height on surface three, how do you get that? Well, you take your, opti uh, your optical angle, n prime u prime the same line you multiply it by your reduced thickness t prime over n prime you multiply those two then you add it to the prior ray height and that is your new ray height that's how you transfer as well as refraction let's uh, right now we're calculating the surface six optical angle so how do you get that well you start at your prior surface ray height, you multiply it by the negative of your power, and you add that to your prior uh, optical angle, and that gives you your new optical angle. Here's the homework. I'm not going to dwell on it. I also will post that down below, a link to the web page down below how to get to that. The first problem is tracing a ray through a single surface, object, refractive surface, image. The second, uh, so that's essentially three surfaces. The second problem is your eye using a magnifier. So in that case, you've got you know, two refractions and your object and image for optical surfaces. Optics Realm is now on iTunes. We're taking the YouTube audio and we're ripping it. So you can listen to it in your car or on your go or when you jog or whatever, or if you are having a hard time falling asleep. Also, the intent of doing that is to put the homework solutions on audio as opposed to putting them on a video production format. 
I know it's kind of hard to understand and follow a solution via audio. You can't show graphs or equations, uh, but this is the route we're taking. And, uh, you know, maybe the audio processing will help turn some, uh, some light bulbs on in your head. Ed Gonzalez is putting this together, and he can be reached at edoptics at gmail.com. It's a good opportunity for him to learn and uh, help, help me out here. I, I appreciate his involvement. You can find us on the web at opticsrealm.com. Here's my email, Twitter, iTunes. Please say hello. Uh, I don't I don't always have a chance to respond and get back in a timely manner, but I'm I'm trying to balance that and uh, work and family. So be patient with me. Here's some coming attractions. I'm putting them here to confuse you a little bit and uh, intrigue your curiosity. Your intellectual curiosity. So we talked about forward ray tracing. You could also do backward ray tracing. So why would you want to do that? Well, let's say you know the chief ray image height and you want to know what your system field of view is. You have to trace backwards to find that out. Or another way is if your aperture stop is buried like a double gauss and you know what the height is, you don't instantly know what your entrance pupil height is, which is your marginal ray and object space at the entrance pupil. So you have to trace backwards from the stop. There's also the YY bar diagram. This was popularized by Dr. Roland Schack, also known as a Delano diagram. And it's really a subject for another podcast. And this is a um, kind of archaic way of looking at things, but it's, it's really powerful when you understand it. So how does it work? It plots a single ray. So uh, you're looking down the optical axis. So this right here is your optical axis. In the YZ plane, so YZ out of plane, that's your chief ray. The ray is a chief ray. In the ZX plane, this is mislabeled. This should be Z. ZX plane is the marginal ray. So as you, sorry, had to stop there. I got a Windows warning. It's a chief ray in the YZ plane and a marginal ray in the XZ plane. So as this ray traces through the optical system, if you look down the optical system, it's going to plot in the YY bar diagram. Sounds really obscure and obtuse, but it shows a lot of power. In this case, we have a one-to-one -one imager. The, the, the object is 2F away, the image is 2F away, and that's shown here. Object, image, remember, anywhere the marginal ray hits zero, that's an image. And the, wherever the chief ray hits zero, that's a stop or a pupil. Here's some other obtuse ciphers for understanding optical system systems. Here's an, uh, an eyepiece. So your eye goes here. This will help your homework. So your marginal ray comes in, focuses. Your chief ray starts at the center of your stop and goes to the edge of your image. So how is that seen on the YY bar diagram? Well, here's your aperture stop. Here's your lens, here's your image. Can also be done for afocal systems. Here is a Galilean, sorry, another Windows warning. And here's a Galilean. And notice it never crosses the Y axis. It's the, there's no intermediate images. It's completely afocal here. So your aperture stop, it happens to be your first lens. This, when the, the, the curve bends, that's where you get optical power. And again, you get optical power here. Positive is, um, kind of clockwise rotation, negative is counterclockwise rotation, and a Keplerian, so an aperture stop uh, through an intermediate image, so your marginal ray comes in, focuses, and then comes out collimated. Your aperture stop is here, but it gets focused and crosses the axis. This is a pupil. So how does it look on the YY bar diagram? Uh, your first lens, your aperture stop, through your intermediate image, through your positive lens, and then collimated again, and there's your pupil as well as Lagrange invariant, invariant, all these are related to ray tracing and first order parameters. We'll get into this later, but the Lagrange invariant, if you place a plane anywhere in an optical system and you plot this quantity, index times uh, as a function of chief marginal ray angle, chief marginal ray angle and height, and uh, you get some parameter. This parameter doesn't change through an optical system. This comes from the conservation of energy. You cannot destroy or create energy. It's also related to the auton do, or if you're into if you're a radiometry kind of guy, it's the area angle product or a omega product that has to be conserved through an optical system. 
So hopefully that's a little bit of a uh, intro to, to podcasts coming. Please stay tuned and uh, check us out. Thank you.